My life doing great, bro. You know, I'm building my drones. I'm building my flying car right now. And uh, yeah, everything good. Yep, so building the shell in foam core right now, then going to be fiberglassing, bondoing, making this super sleek and then uh, starting the fiberglass, then cutting all this, making molds and all that. Yep. Okay, so now what we're doing here is we're working on the wings holding the wheel side. This is going to be a vehicle that carry the drone. Um, so we're taking dimension for that. That little train vehicle uh, is going to somehow be detachable. Uh, but um, in the first place, this is going to be making the drone itself as a flying car. Um, so it's going to look really cool. Uh, also, it's a one person. Um, and it's a 42 inch prop. It's gonna fly very well, and that's about it for now. So we're back on to uh, working on the chassis, and uh, so the chassis here is going to be uh, aluminum, high grade, uh, three eighth inch. Uh, it's really, really good quality, and um, we're gonna be making a frame here for the drone. Now see working on the frame. So uh, it's gonna be pretty high grade there. The chassis is now done. Um, so yeah. Alright so what we're doing here is the frame. This is the bottom body. We are measuring it on the top. Um, so the whole frame is going to be sandwiched in between an aluminum plate and a carbon plate. So that's how I um, plan to do it. This is also the battery box um, in some way. Uh, it's going to be figuring um, on that section where the batteries are going to be, which I believe are right around here and right around here. So that's what we'll be doing. I'm now working on the chassis, so that's gonna be super cool. So here, um, as you can see, we folded uh, the aluminum board frame and uh, we are ready for the foldings of uh, a bit of the cockpit and stuff, uh, as well as what you can see here is the uh, motor mounts that we're working on here. So I'm just working on motor mounts and seeing how they're going to sandwich together um, with two different pieces uh, like such and basically hold the two different motors as well as the ESCs inside so it's really good. So we just 3D printed this uh, air van that's going to be putting air into the cockpit so that's uh, what we did we're about to do also the front here which will have also an air van including the lights uh, the light bar um, 
Here we're about to prepare the carbon fiber for the front gasket um, section of the drone. Then we have uh, the design for the motor mounts and then we're going to be coupling these motor mounts with carbon fiber um, tubes and the same plate will be at the bottom. So the motors will be turning in opposite direction from that side to the bottom plate, which will kind of come like this. And um, that's how it's going to really uh, be very efficient. If it's too heavy, which it's not going to be because um, with all the motors, we're going to be able to carry about 800 pounds. So if it's you know too heavy uh, or if we want to save more weight we'll just turn all these parts into carbon uh, but for now uh, aluminum is the choice all right so right now we're uh, applying another layer of the uh, fiberglass so what that is is basically for us to have a very strong and tangible mold so that we can uh, have a male mold right now uh, of course there is a bunch of spots that we're going to have to work with but yeah basically we're working on the bonnet uh, for the front section um, so the cool thing is uh, it's coming up pretty nice there is no bubbles um, Everything is looking good. It's nice fiberglass here. So that's what we're doing. And um, after that, we're going to be working on the uh, bonnets for the sides. As you see here, we've covered it up, uh, strengthened it up. But it's possible that we redo this piece. Uh, but the 3D part. Printed alone is uh, not such a good filament, so I have to find another way to print this. However, uh, we're working on that bonnet here, and we're adding really nice touch to it. These are car parts that we're cutting now. The whole thing here is going to be my male mold, then I'm going to create a female mold, and then we're going to be able to produce a full carbon fiber bonnet out of that. So that's what we're doing here, guys. Then uh, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing for that, as well as this zone. So it's a lot of work. But uh, it's getting there. Alright guys, so this is what uh, is the move so far. We've done the, the top plate. So uh, it's really cool. Everything is properly fixed. Um, so what we need now is to reinforce again some of the inside to make sure that there is absolutely zero torsion. And after that, uh, we're gonna keep on working with the rest of the body. So far, so good. Um, I'm trying to place the chair and trying to see where the placements are and all that for now. Um, it will have a grill on the front. It will look pretty cool. So far, so good. Alright, so today uh, when we went to Toronto, we got the uh, super really good carbon fiber uh, rolls. So uh, that's about 750 bucks out of this stuff. And uh, it's a very expensive fabric. What we're gonna do is definitely uh, wrap it up on top of the vehicle after we're done with the fiberglassing of the first part. This is the carbon fiber part. So we took a um, structural and 
strength based carbon fiber twill and then we took a uh, cosmetic uh, twill that uh, has a more a satin finish hopefully uh, it's going to cover the angles that we do not have a vacuum press so uh, we're going to be able to uh, do a certain amount of work but it will be limited to the lack of pressure that we won't be able to apply as it would be done without vacuum molding so here we're going to do uh, uh, wet and dry applying of resin on that and that's how we're going to get to the polishing of this so the carbon fiber is going to come all over um, just like we did here for the uh, fiberglassing um, so the step is that I'm fiberglassing the cardboard once the fiberglass is on, I will put bondos to cover all the different marks on it and uh, sand it, sand it again, sand it, sand it again, and then we will start uh, with the carbon fiber uh, section. All right, guys, so now what we're doing is we're doing another layer of fiberglass before we actually applying the carbon so we're doing reinforcement mainly and uh, we're doing this plate here uh, for this side which is the lighting plate side um, we've worked on the lights uh, a little bit and the aeration uh, for the lights as well so uh, we're working on that and then uh, I'm working on the section here which we've redone completely so uh, we've started from scratch here so now it's 100 percent symmetrical and uh, it's going to do a great job here is going to be an aeration fan that's going to be pretty good for the air coming in going in and cooling off batteries number two and then we have the sections uh, to be finished here very very soon this section is now completely finished, polished, and bondoed. Uh, we have a zero, zero um, scratches on it. It's really smooth. It doesn't look smooth, but it's actually really smooth. If I would have painted, you would see a really shiny look to it. Uh, so this is the final layer of the carbon of the fiberglass. Then we're going to be putting the actual. Um, carbon fiber on that so uh, stay tuned for that but so far so good we have uh, pretty good angles it's a good vehicle from behind it's got really cool angles from the sides um, yeah so we're working on the body this is again a very good format that uh, I found that uh, it's making the structure really light and making the structure really easy to work with from the start and then when we can copy from that and make even lighter lighter parts so in other words So basically what we did here is uh, we integrated that joystick and this one inside the radio. I killed the pots here. They're still working but I disconnected them to replace with better pots with better throttles and better systems here. The USB connection of that joystick is still valid, so it still can connect to a computer so that we can get missions uh, done, you know, and things via mission planner. And then uh, the main controls are there. So I'll show you here. So for instance, if I go in that, I'm gonna show you the actual display. So these are the channels. So we have, um, 10 channels 
right around yep so here I'm gonna be moving the throttle here so it's perfect see and then I'm gonna be moving that stick so that's gonna be the yaw Parfait, perfect and then channel 2 and then so channel 2 is like that and then channel 1 so all of these together it's perfectly working so there you have it guys we basically did a fucking cockpit in seconds with the conversion of the radio so this works perfectly and then we're gonna output it via um, uh, the MISO and uh, MOSI outputs uh, into a CAN bus module and then we're gonna be on CAN bus uh, connecting directly to the flight controller over CAN bus if possible if not we will uh, use uh, other module other systems to do that and then uh, It'll be wired up. All right, guys. I'm using the Thrustmaster uh, joystick, which is the T-Flight. Uh, and I'm using the Thrustmaster Warthog uh, joystick, which is a uh, A10 uh, simulated uh, grip. Which works just the same it's really good because it got hull sensor so there is absolutely no uh, no breakage between the joints um, so you can really couple the axis uh, perfectly there is no no glitch you know that you could find on a regular joystick although this one doesn't have neither and it has the yaw which this one doesn't have so I was thinking about making a yaw by adding a potentiometer here and making this to be moving uh, however it's gonna be very difficult so um, that's what I got so far and the throttle that matches that and of course uh, the Logitech Pro here that I got it out to do things and testing last time but uh, that's not gonna be needed we can use the pots or whatever all right, so we now have these two joysticks and we activated a switch here that flips um, a RC override inside the code so that we can have a joystick from the ground control as well as the main joysticks. So that's similar to switching between if this was joysticks connected to a PC and this was the radio and we would switch in between these spots and that pot. So that's basically what we did. So instead I deactivated that using the joysticks here to test if I can switch in between two different joysticks without going through USB. Anyway, when we switch in that switch here, so here we have in control here, okay? as you can see over there so when I turn the switch when I move that we have raw pitch and all that okay and so this is the joystick that's the real commands now when I flick that switch we're going off on channel 5, so what's happening is now I have control over this joystick. So here it is. So that's what it is. So we have now two joysticks as redundant control systems. Um, so that's going to be really good for testing on the uh, platform. Uh, we're doing two GPS, two redundant joystick systems. Uh, it's going to be two receivers. Everything is going to be two by twos. All right. All right. So now it's all dried up. We have a nice little body. There's no holes. I'm really happy with the finish. 
It's really tight, really strong. So what we need now is to keep going with the, with the layers. Uh, we've made layers after layers. Now we're doing another layer off of that bonnet. Um, and beside that, pretty much everything is now super strong. And the junction in between the first cast and the second cast is also doing really good. So it's really flat. Um, and here it's really, really sleek. So when I'm gonna put the resin level, then it's gonna be really perfect, you know? Um, so that's what I'm doing, guys, and that's what it is. All right, today we're going to be working on this engine start system. So this will replace the um, motor, whatever engine button that we have on the Pixhawk. This will be the power button for the console. This will be the left motors uh, for the left side front. This will be the right motors for the front side right. This will be the back motors for the left side. And this will be the right motors for the back side. So it will all light up and then uh, it will work that way. This works with 12 volt, but I'm gonna be powering 12 volt because they're lit. Um, and this way, even though it's an infrastructure of a 12 volt switching system, it's not gonna burn my circuit because of being overamped if I put it on the negative. And this is how this button is going to make a lot of sense because when all of this is on then the quad will be asking on the ground control to that the basically the uh the start switch is needs to be clicked and so when we're going to be pressing that for three seconds then the motor um fail safe system that is triggered will basically be recognized and it will be possible to arm the device so that's how uh, I'm calling it an engine start so that's about it for now um, just uh, stay tuned on that switch box when the motors and the batteries will be here it all gonna make a lot of sense have uh, carbon blade 42 inches uh, I'm gonna unbox them. All right, so today we have received the Cube Orange ADS-B compliant. This is allowing us to see all the planes in the sky, including, you know, the airliners and everything. So we will never hit a plane again with this system. Now we also got the CAN bus system. So this is a bunch of CAN bus module. It takes two of them to connect each time, uh, but we're gonna turn every devices that we have into a CAN bus uh, device on a CAN bus network. And then we've got the um, OLED screen. So I know Pedram, you're gonna love that. These OLED screens are gonna give us the status of the Pixhawk and the status of a bunch of different things that we want to display in real time via I2C. These are I2C OLED screens, so I'm gonna connect that. We connected one of these tiny screens. So uh, that gives us a very good way to see the modes and all of that in real time so this is the data that's going to kind of come up uh, in real time inside the cockpit as well so that's done moving on to the next phases all right so we have now Android planner on Android custom tablet as you can see here is the brain here is the touchscreen 
uh, it's connected to the Pixhawk via that antenna and it's all working this app is not valid on Google Play anymore but I found it online and uh, installed the APK directly from the browser and voila that's a uh, carbon fiber right there it's really nice nice as a motherfucker so we're gonna cut the details and uh, it's all ready to go basically I'm gonna send all of this but uh, it's hard like hard hard some sanding and uh, we're gonna do the second layer with uh, the details and uh, you guys gonna see how super sleek this is of course we're gonna do the rest uh, all that uh, fiberglass is gonna now get covered with carbon fiber guys okay, so we kind of did the carbon fiber uh, two layers right now so it's really really strong and uh, looks really sharp there is no air pockets there is nothing and uh, we just need to polish and uh, here we put a, a little back cover so uh, that also works really well that little back cover so it's gonna fit like that uh, this way we have a lot of storage space Get nice angles done and uh, these are uh, three layers everywhere um, here we have less layers but uh, it's strong and so we just need to varnish now Uh, this is close to uh, really really good we're about to cut some uh, holes for carbon fiber booms they're gonna be 60 millimeter booms in here this is the air drum for cooling the batteries which is going to work right there we removed the bottom chassis plate uh, along with some reinforcement which we didn't need and we're removing the aluminum booms here, replacing them with carbon booms, which we're going to be putting at the bottom here. We've also cut this section, which was straight like that. We've cut it like this, and uh, it's matching the 3D design. Um, we now have the mount and system finished up there with uh, a fully reinforced uh, carbon, with a carbon fiber boom in it. Uh, so everything is really really strong. We can really support any kind of window structure here Then we have the electrical rails that are put in place in there uh, As you can see and the bottom as far as the actual uh, Bucket and the plate for the inside body So what we're doing here is we're carbon fibering Everything it's gonna be the strongest bathtub ever this is a bottom with aluminum with a cover uh, uh, for the bottom in aluminum but uh, the entire structure is going to be carbon all the way to the inside over there uh, which we're going to have as you can see the aluminum is under but we're going to be putting it uh, all the way and then all to the walls so it's all going to be a one-piece bathtub covered of carbon fiber so it's not much of conductivity here it's pretty much the opposite so we're now keeping conductive zones in the front and in the back as that's why you see the aluminum structure as well as on the sides here 
So we have conductive zones for electronics that uh, can be conductive on the outside world. Everything for the inside is basically going to be super sealed. And then uh, this is the, the air drum basically that you see here. Um, so how that work is the air is coming from this side and it's entering through here inside the cockpit. The air that is coming from here is actually going through the batteries and it's coming out here. Um, it's also coming in, so it's circulating the air inside the battery box. For those that didn't know, these are the battery box and um, we're keeping two battery box on each side and a battery in the bottom, uh, which is going to clear uh, a lot of um, issues with where to put the battery power packs and reduce the size of the wires all around. Um, uh, also separating the batteries because they can get pretty hot if the battery pack is all in one piece. We would need cooling. Here we won't need cooling. We got air cooling instead. And so I'm very happy about that. And this is the positions for the primary throttle and primary joystick quadrants over there while we have the controls that are all um, placed near the fingers on the command system. So it's a very ergonomic armrest slash control for both sides while being a battery box. So I found this very uh, appealing and smart uh, overall. The air is really well distributed from the air coming through the cockpit to the air going through the batteries. Um, it's coming slightly in a forward motion as the copter is angled like that when it flies. So um, it's very, very well put together. Um, yeah, then we have another open section here so that the GPS and all the different uh, equipment can actually uh, not be obstructed by all this carbon. And uh, it's gonna be uh, a very good solution for getting good reception for satellites. So that's about it. Uh, our little trunk here is going to harvest uh, our generators inside as well as the carbon booms and uh, we're pretty much good to go guys. Uh, so this is it. So stay tuned for the rest of course and uh, you know we're gonna get there. So this is the seatbelt system for the chair for the harness. So um, it's actually the poor armor. Uh, the poor armor is actually a, a, a really one of the best on the market. You know, we could have buy you know a thirty to uh, fifty, sixty dollar ones, but uh, you know uh, the the person in my life uh, always think of the best. So uh, here it is. We have the pro armor instead. And uh, I'm really happy of it because judging of the, of the weight of the box, it's actually relatively wearable uh, for something like this. Because yesterday I was saying, you know, it's going to be too heavy. And in fact, it's, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful harness. That's a beautiful harness. Uh, it's, it's really exactly what we wanted. So uh, thank you, Melanie. <laughs> Yep, it's gonna be a beautiful vehicle right there, I tell you guys. Really, really beautiful. Of course, the inside, I'm gonna make it uh, red. And it's gonna be carbon Kevlar. And uh, after the resin is done, it's gonna be just like this, basically. Super sleek and shiny. So I just want to document this because um, this little cell I made um, is actually so strong that this 3.8 volt cell when I'm trying to actually charge this cell, this cell actually discharge itself into the cell charging that cell instead of this one. And this cell voltage is only 1.6 volt. 
and uh, also the other crazy thing about this is these two electrodes made out of carbon they act like hair to the environment and apparently they are separating the electrodes uh, th the particles of air uh, and the electric particles of air in the air because this battery left over time come back to its original voltage even if it was discharged to its half like let's say I discharged to 0.5 volt I come back the next day and it's charged back to 1.6 volt back again and uh, if I try to apply it to this cell then before it was charging this battery but now that this battery is basically energized it cannot be charged by a 3.7 volt cell it charges it um, so that gives us a little ratio of how powerful this would be if I would uh, to put them in series and then in parallel and that's quite incredible really um, so I just thought I had to document this real quick okay so these batteries are working um, this is basically carbon based aluminum batteries bro that are actually working I've put them in parallel um, it gives me a lot of amps and then I put them in series and then sure enough each of them is about 1.6 uh, volt so sure enough I get about 4.2 uh, 3.6 volt nominal and uh, it can charge to like the double of that voltage basically um, it it can charge to a lot um, if you leave it for a long time but it charged to its nominal voltage to very quick short period of time like, just like a capacitor but if you leave it longer it's just gonna rack up um, basically it's gonna rack up uh, you know amps and it's just going to give you amp hours so you know there is flexible formats there is uh, the hard format and then there is the hard format with carbon uh, carbon uh, exits then there is aluminum exit and carbon and then there is uh, all carbon exit but uh, double side of carbon and then there is this one is really cool because in fact it's not only flexible made out of just aluminum uh, and, and carbon but it has more liquid in it and um, it's interesting but the most interesting one I say is still this one because this one charge it from the air I don't know why but it literally come back to its voltage every freaking day you come back and it's back to the same voltage so it's like it's a battery here that doesn't need uh, to charge check it out this is the sales platform so uh, pretty much like Tesla how it's gonna be is they're going to be uh, selecting different options here outside look inside feel power regen vision tilt and some more and then it's going to be changing the price uh, that's going that's associated with that reservation and basically they're going to be reserving this vehicle and live I already got somebody that uh, actually tried to reserve uh, that's incredible hi guys so here I'm doing testing obviously the vehicle is going to be talking so uh, here's an example it's going to be saying the, the different modes So I've put a nice little light to actually advertise the modes when they are displayed. Stabilized light mode. The machine is actually talking back to the pilot. Light mode. 
uh, from inside the cockpit, which is a very good example on how many modes we can have. Return to launch flight mode. And so, guided flight mode. Yep, that's really impressive. Bye for now. Morning, so uh, here is a really good vision of the joystick here. Um, personally, I really like it, it's not finished, but uh, the program that I designed for this is really cool because uh, the throttle is moving from down to the of the quadrant to up. Uh, and then the yaw axis, which is basically the twist of the axis of the joystick, moves as a, as a bar uh, to the right and the left. And then, uh, of course, the other axes are also moving. According to the hand and of course the values are displayed so beside making a little bit of the finishing uh, on uh, the look and feel of the joystick um, we're pretty much like 80% done oh yeah and look at this auto loiter guided and stabilized and I didn't configure these buttons I'm gonna use them for something internal of the cockpit we got the main mode and the trigger of course for landing or takeoff uh, and all of this is configurable as we wish so that's the plus of having a joystick that we create is that we can configure every single thing part of it so, I thought I was gonna give you guys an update. So here it is. All right, so I just wanna show you real quick. Uh, this is the system for the lights of the back of the vehicle. And so when uh, the vehicle starts up, uh, that's what it does. And it's connected to the joystick uh, for the lighting turn signals, which I think is very useful for crowded environment uh, of the future. Uh, and it's matching just like flying cars, uh, cars, flying cars, they all, they should have turn signals. Um, and so when you move the joystick to the right, turn signal is coming up, joystick to the left, turn signal is coming up. And of course I created a dead band so that you can actually control the joystick um, the right you know the, the fine angles as you can see you can control the joystick in the fine angles but then as soon as you move to a little like on a short direction then obviously you're uh, turning and that's it cheers <laughs>